Yes, my people, it is your boy VRD back for another commentated drive. And today we're going to be doing, well, tonight I should say, we're going to be taking a class. Oh gosh, I said class. Wait, I can still say it myself. A class 499 electric multiple unit, aka the 1972 tube stock, down from Harrow and Worldstone to Elephant and Castle. The time is currently. 2300 in real life 2305 in game and this is the last service of the day so we're going to be taking this down to elephant and castle like i just said and calling it a night you can see the trains already parked up in the side and it's just in the distance there in about two minutes time it's gonna creep into the station at 10 miles an hour at that point we're gonna take control of the train from the artificial intelligence and drive it down to elephant and castle calling at all stations which is about a 50 minute run or so so yeah and here she is whoa where's where where enough okay cool in reality a, a driver wouldn't just randomly accelerate like that halfway through the platform with a station they intend on stopping at but we're gonna ignore that get out of my seat uh okay i've it's been a while since i've last driven this thing so forgive me if i'm a bit rusty well the train's rusty not me <laughs> i don't know how these things are still in service you know F 51 years 52 years of that 52 years i think yeah 52 years it's 2024 i don't know how on earth these things haven't been scrapped yet these these are some workhorses let me tell you that um keys already in yep that is fine um power brake controller is in the real one and hold position elephant and castle yep all good to go green signal whacking the door close button it's a very intense um calling pattern on the Bakerloo land so I might get a bit overwhelmed with the commentary I'm not going to be able to call out every single action I'm doing but I'll try my best speed limit departing Harrow and Wildstone is 45 miles an hour just taking my time with the power brake controller there just notching it up to um, parallel unlike other multiple units that you get on the main line the class 499 also known as the i keep accidentally saying the word class but i need to just say 1972 tube stock 1972 tube stock only has three notches of power those being shunt series and parallel so shunt being notch one series being notch two parallel being notch three so if you ever hear me say shunt series and parallel now you know what i'm on about but i'll try my best just to just say notches one two and three and it has four steps of braking although it technically has six but five and six are a bit more technical i doubt i'm going to go into those today but yeah so you're going to hear me say brake steps one two three and four and power notches one two three or shunt series and parallel Approaching 45 miles an hour now, we're not too far out from Kenton Station. So I've just reduced the power to shunt. Although because this train is camshaft driven, um, full power is still being supplied to the motors. I just moved the, um, the power controller back to shunt so it's easier for me to idle the power when the need arises now absolutely slamming on the brakes coming into kenton station here because i did leave the braking a bit too late i did say i was going to be a bit too rusty on this and then yeah just creeping my way along the platform towards the end stopping position is at the end of every platform in a 1972 tube stock there we go so between here and, well, between Harrow and Worldstone and Queen's Park, the stations are shared with London Overground. So in reality, you would see class 378s and class 710s. 
trundling up and down along the same tracks as us but Dovetail Games decided not to implement the Class 710 on the Bakerloo line the reason being um, apparently the Class 710 isn't able to register the 4th rail system or something I, I haven't got a clue like, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine anyway let's get a move on here next station is South Kenton South Kenton station always catches me out in terms of the correct stopping position I always find myself approaching the stopping position a bit too fast I think it's due to the fact that it's actually an offside dual release so the CCTV monitors your distance perception gets a bit thrown off you're going to see what I'm on about in a sec but yeah speed limit is still 45 miles an hour in fact it's going to be 45 miles an hour until after Wembley Park Station which is in three stops time <laughs> excuse me not too far out from South Kenton Station now you can see South Kenton coming up now so I'm going to get the brakes on just the brake step one application there Brake step 1 in a 1972 stock is also known as real static 1 and hold. I did get the brakes in a bit too early there so I'm just releasing them. Ideally you want to enter these platforms at about 25 miles an hour and from there brake step 1 normally does the job. You might need to adjust the braking force every now and then as you're travelling up the platform just to get you stopped in the right position so yeah just up in it to break step two momentarily where are the cctv monitors are oh, they're miles away yeah just releasing the brakes momentarily there and some bursts of break step one just to get us stopped in the correct position just like so perfect door release on the right I didn't get thrown off too much this time stopping at South Kenton. I think it's because I've I've done this so much times now that I'm used to it. But back when I first started driving this, it was really a struggle getting the cab lined up with these monitors over here. Next stop is North Wembley. But yeah, the Bay Clue line in Trains and World is old. This came out back in 2020. I actually remember when this first came out. This is what motivated me to actually get into train sim mode. Because I was quite familiar with Train Sim Classic, the old train simulator, even Open BVE and well, if we want to go all the way back, even Microsoft Train Simulator very briefly back when I was a little young boy. But um yeah, Train Sim World, I didn't jump straight on it. I only jumped on Train Sim World in 2020 when the Bakerloo Line was released. And I must say, it was very enjoyable. I, I spent hours and hours and hours driving up and down the Bakerloo Line when it first came out. But that was quite a while ago now. So as you can see, the lighting isn't really up to today's standards. Like, it's currently 11 o'clock at night, but I'm still... I'm, I'm I'm able to see quite a lot. We could say that it's because of the moonlight, maybe that um that's why visibility is this good. But I don't know. I still feel like it would be a bit darker. But like I said, it's an old route, so kind of justifiable here. Just pulling into what is this station? North Wembley. perfect let's see if I can remember the stations from here down to Elephant and Castle so I believe it's Wembley Central, Stonebridge Park, um, Green Signal um, Wembley Central, Stonebridge Park Wilsdon Junction Kensal Green, Queens Park, Kilburn Park Maidavell, Warwick Avenue, Paddington Edgware Road 
Marylebone, Baker Street, Regent's Park, Oxford Circus, Piccadilly Circus, Ch Charing Cross, Embankment, Waterloo, Lambeth North, and finally Elephants and Castle. So yeah, it has been a while since I last drove on this, but you know, your boys still got it. Still got the knowledge and them things there. Speed limit is still 45 miles an hour, but like I said, soon going down to 40 miles an hour. And I'm actually in fact going to turn on the cab light, but only on the right hand side, just so it doesn't get too much glare on the windscreen. And we're actually coming up on <laughs> Wembley Central Station fast, so I'm going to get a bit of braking in. Actually, maybe that's a bit too early on the brakes. It's going to momentarily release it. And reapply. Yeah, the reason I'm... um, uh, The brakes are a lot more effective than uh, I actually thought. I think it's because I've spent all day on the gospel oak to bark... Gospel oak? Gospel oak to barking land. And the brakes on the class 710s aren't too good, so... Yeah, I feel like I'm being a bit too overly cautious. I can be a bit more aggressive on the class 499. I keep calling it class 499. 1972 stock. It is actually also known as the class 499 though. You guys probably thought I was making that up. But I'm not. That is, um, I remember I researched it because it technically runs on network rail. So legally it has to have a... I think it's the tops classification it has to have its own class so they named it the class 499 so yeah a little fun fact for you you can go on wikipedia right now search up class 499 you see this ugly train pop up next station stonebridge park So yeah, as I was saying, I just decided to turn on the cab light now because once we get to Queen's Park, we're going to go into the underground tunnels for the rest of the way down to Elephant and Castle. And if I forget to turn on the cab lights after we go into the tunnels, it's, it's not going to be pleasant. Let's just say that. So I'm going to do it from now. It is possible to drive without the cab lights and I have done it before. But I feel like to keep things a bit more interesting, I'm going to drive with the cab lights. Speed limit's now gone down to 40 miles an hour, just to help us negotiate this curve safely. We're now diving under the West Coast main line here. And at the other side of this underbridge, sorry, the other side of this overbridge, we're going to be permitted to accelerate back up to 45 miles an hour. So I've gone straight back into full power there. Sorry, I'm scratching myself right next to the microphone. Very unprofessional behavior. And I'm about to sniff again as well. How about that? <sighs> On the left is Stonebridge Park Maintenance Depot. The main maintenance depot for 1972 stock. On the Bakerloo line. You've also got a minor depot down at london road near lambeth north station however the main depot is located at stonebridge park and here we are at stonebridge park station little fun fact when approaching stonebridge park station in the northbound direction you must reduce your speed down to 15 miles an hour before entering the platform I'm not sure why, but I have a feeling it's something to do with the points situated just beyond the platform. But yeah, um, I saw that in a route learning video on the Bakerloo land. You have to be doing 15 miles an hour before entering the platform when traveling in the other direction. Goodness knows where. But yeah, green signal, get those doors closed. We are starting to slip behind schedule a bit, so I'm going to up the pace a bit 
I'm not gonna hang about at these stations for too long because it's it is 11 o'clock at night, so no one's gonna be wanting to get on and off of the trains like that. So we don't need to stay here for too long. Next station is Halsden. Ah, I forgot about Halsden Station. When I was listing all of the stations between Thingy and Elephant and Castle, I missed out Halsden. It's Stonebridge Park, Halsden, then Wilsden Junction. And I think I got everything correct after that. How could I forget about Halsden? Speed limit is still 45 miles an hour. It will be reducing to 30 between Halsden and Wilsden Junction station. Stations. can see the platforms of Harsden coming up in the distance. I'm just shutting off the power. Going to get my break step one application in from now. And I'll increase the up to step two when I deem it necessary. Break step one might be doing the job, right? Yep, break step one is doing the job. I'm being very oshity. Oh, osh, oshity. Oh my goodness. I'm being very overly cautious on the braking. I think I need to be a bit more aggressive because... I'm using only break step one, but I'm still finding myself slowing down too quickly. So that is a big problem. Yeah, look at this. Um, I've yeah, that's that's enough. Do you know what? Off after this, I'm just gonna be I'm gonna go ham on the brakes because I can't be entering stations slowly like this. I'm just gonna start running late. And it's gonna take me longer to complete the run, which isn't ideal because I would like to go to bed. Thank you. Right get those doors open yeah see we're nearly two minutes late now yeah that does it fun time's over let's let's do this man next station wilsden junction we're now passing beneath the dudding hill line which is a well-known freight line that goes across north london I remember looking at it on, on Google Maps. It is actually quite a fascinating land. Um, and you actually get AI on this land. It is quite rare, but um, I remember one time I was stopped at Halsden and I heard a class 66 and I was thinking, what the flip? I thought it was on the West Coast mainland at first, but then I saw it going across the bridge that we just passed beneath. And I didn't know what land that was at first. So I went on Google Maps to look at it and discovered it was the Darden Hill land. So yeah. It was just accelerating towards 45 miles an hour, but I've now given it a quick burst of brake step three to bring us down for the 30 limit. That burst, did I just say brake step three? Sorry, brake step one, not brake step three. And that burst of brake step one was way too early. I could have definitely given that another 15 seconds or so. There's the commencement of the 30 limit now. And here we are at Wilsden Junction. Up to break step three, trying desperately not to overshoot. Now bouncing between break steps one and two, releasing just to creep up to the stop board. Perfect stop. And we clawed back a bit of time, about 10 seconds or so. Luckily the loading times have been shortened in Train Sim World 2, for example. Train Sim World 2 is what I started playing on. I think I bought it when it was released back in August 2020, along with the Bay Clue line. Back then, the loading times for the passengers were absolutely horrendous. They would, they would take like, you'd have to wait for like 15 seconds or so on the Bay Clue line. Southeastern high speed, when that came out in January 2021, you'd have to wait for a full 60 seconds before you were able to close the doors, which is horrid because it would make you end up running late 
but luckily they shortened it now in these newer versions of train sim mode speed limit is 30 miles an hour so i've just reduced the power down to series and what i was going to touch on earlier but i didn't really get to touch on it properly because i had to slow down for kenton station the this is a camshaft driven train so to reduce your power Right. selecting a lower power setting and actually reducing your power are two separate things in this train select oh, not a good not a good explanation selecting a lower power position and actually reducing the power are two different things there we go that's that makes it a bit easier to understand so for example speed limit has now gone up to 45 miles an hour so I've selected parallel, AKA full power. I'm now going back into notch one, also known as shunt, but the train is still technically in full power. If I wanted to actually reduce the power to shunt, I would have to shut off the power and then reselect the shunt position. To reduce power, you can't just go down into a lower power setting. If you do that, then the amount of power supplied to the motors is going to stay the same. So the only way to actually reduce the amount of power that's being supplied to the motors is to shut off the power and then reselect the lower power setting. And that is that applies to the 1972 stock, the class 313. I know those two trains for certain are camshaft driven. I'd assume it's the same for the 1938 stock on the Iron Line, although I don't drive that. I don't even drive the 313 anymore because it's it got scrapped. So I, to keep things realistic, I uninstalled it from train sim mode. I know it seems a bit childish, but I like to keep things nice and realistic. So yeah, goodbye 313. That was Kensal Green Station. Next station is Queen's Park, where we will say goodbye to the West Coast Main Line, the London Overground Watford DC Line that we're currently traveling on. And we'll be saying hello to the London Underground. So you can see in the distance there, we've got our signal with position four junction indication telling us that we are being routed onto the London Underground Network. So I'm gonna shut off the power as we pass this signal and then get a break step one application in to bring us down for the 15 mile an hour speed limit associated with the turnout through Queen's Park Shed and into Queen's Park Station on the London Underground platforms. London Overground has separate platforms at Queen's Park. So we're down to 15 miles an hour in good time. You can see the 15 ward there with the arrow pointing to the right, telling us that we need to be doing 15 miles an hour for this turn up but trains continuing straight can remain at 45 miles an hour and at this point keep an eye on your signals coming through the shed here because you can get brought down to a red signal to give a train that is stabled in the shed there um priority over you into queen's park station And here we are, Queen's Park. I've really forgotten how to drive this thing. Like I used to be really good at this, but now I'm 
horrid on the bricks. It's actually ridiculous. How are we looking on time? Okay, one minute late. Not too bad. Green signal. We're not going to hang about here. We're just going to... We're literally just doing a stop and go thing. Like, no hanging about. Next station is Kilburn Park. Speed limit 15 miles an hour departing from Queen's Park. I'm going to accelerate up to 10 and then shut off the power because we're going to enter a very, very, very steep downward gradient to descend into the tunnels. So what's going to happen is our speed is going to roll up towards 15 and by the time it does get to 15 the speed limit would have increased to 35 miles an hour so you can see the 35 board coming up now there it is so full power when you're traveling on the london underground section of the route you're permitted to accelerate up to the speed limit when the front of your train reaches the speed board as opposed to when you're driving on network rail where you, you can only accelerate up to a higher speed limit when the full length of your train has passed the speed board so i shut off the power at 30 miles an hour there still going downhill so speed rolled up to 35 once it got up to 35, made a brake step one application and I'm now maintaining that brake step one application to bring us into Warwick Avenue station. Sorry, not Warwick Avenue, Kilburn Park. <laughs> and just bouncing between some of these brake steps to help us accomplish an accurate stop. Perfect. And on the London Underground, the London Underground Bakerloo Line 1972 stock is one of the only trains where I will not select full service and neutral when at a stand. The driving policy states that you have to select brake step one, also known as real static one, and hold when at a stand at stations. And you're not required to select neutral on the FNR switch. I think I think it's called a selector switch on the 1972 stock. FNR switch would be for mainland stock. Speed limit is still for actually what is the speed limit? What is the speed limit? No, nah, speed limit is 35 coming through here. Next station is Maidaville, and I believe it goes down to 30 on the other side of Maidaville station, although I might be wrong. Yeah, no, sorry, it goes down to 30 departing from Maidaville, then it goes up to 35 just before the next station, which is Warwick Avenue. And then I won't think too far ahead now because I'm just going to overwhelm myself, but yeah. Got a green signal, get those doors closed. What you guys may notice is what I'm actually doing is I'm actively looking at the CCTV monitors even though they're obviously not functional, it's just a nice habit to get into for a bit of added immersion. And it's also a good habit to get into just for when you start driving trains in rural life, if that's what you intend on doing, you're gonna already start building up good habits that will help you out. And I'm also looking at the door interlock button sorry the door interlock light ensuring that it's illuminated before i take power you don't just want to listen out for the doors closing and then listen to the da ding that the game makes you actually want to look at the door interlock button door interlock light not button and ensure that it's illuminated 
speed limit's gone down to 30 miles an hour so just remember when departing from Maidaville in the southbound direction just stay below 30 although the speed limit has now gone up to 35 again the speedboard was just there it was extremely hard to make out in fact I couldn't see what it said I just know that the speed limit goes up to 35 miles an hour at this point and here we are coming into Warwick Avenue station very hard brake application is required because you can't see the station until the last minute yeah you when driving through the tunnels hardless on the london underground bakerloo line in trains in world you have no trace but to memorize where all of the speed limits are because it's impossible to see what the signs say you you literally just have to know what the speed limit is at all the locations there's no other way around it next station is paddington speed limit drops to 25 miles an hour between here and Paddington what I'm looking out for is a a double green signal followed by a right hand curve and then a single green signal after that right hand curve the 25 mile an hour speed limit commences at that single green signal so there's the double green this is the right hand curve that I was on about the moment I see I think it's the next signal the moment I see that I'm going to get a brake step one application in to bring us down to 25 there it is there getting the brakes in down to 25 just in time you can see the speed board there but like i said you, you literally can't see what it says you just have, you just have to know that it's a 25 mile an hour speed limit and here we are coming into paddington station here man don't eat marmot sorry that wasn't funny it's not, it's not even marmite what was he eat? marmalade or something i've had marmalade before marmalade is actually pretty decent anyway um speed limit drops to 20 departing from paddington station here again just actively looking at those cctv monitors and the door interlock light you can see the 20 board there so only going to accelerate up to 20 miles an hour and then the speed limit will shortly be increasing up to 35 so we're looking out for the board with the letter T on it there we go letter T so that tells us we can accelerate up to 35 the London Underground is a bit weird like some of their boards have the letter T on it to tell you to accelerate up to a certain speed. I don't know why they don't just say what the speed limit is on the board. I'm, I'm not sure why they're saying the letter T. I understand what it means. It obviously means termination of the speed restriction. But it, why not just say what the actual speed limit is? Why, why are you saying T? it's a bit it baffles me a bit so again you just have to know what the speed limit is because <laughs> you, the board doesn't tell you the board just says letter T so your route knowledge has to be very strong in order for you to drive on this route hard let's, let's just say that oops Edgware Road Station get those doors open speed limit reduces to 25 miles an hour departing from Edgware Road there just take a glance at that signal as well green aspect get the doors closed interlock we're away remembering only to accelerate up to 25 of course lovely stuff
again just taking advantage of that camshaft so moving the power brake controller into notch one of power as we get closer to 25 miles an hour just to make it easier to shut off the power when we do reach 25 miles an hour this is i believe this is is this baker street station no Marylebone station Something that always happens on the Bakerloo line is the drivers will tend to open the doors before the train has come to a stop, a stand. I, I just find it very hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. All right, next station is Baker Street keeping in mind that the speed limit is still 25 miles an hour another thing about this route as well is that the northbound speed limits and the southbound speed limits are completely different at this point in the route if you're traveling in the other direction the speed limit will be 35 miles an hour which i think is hilarious it's 25 going southbound 35 going northbound makes no sense at all but is what it is here we are approaching Baker Street again just aiming for the 25 mile an hour entry into each of these stations and then from there predominantly brake step one to come to a stand with other brake steps where necessary so releasing the brakes there momentarily because we were coming in a bit too slowly bouncing between the release and brakes step one positions to come to a nice controlled and accurate stop perfect signal was red but it's now jumped up to a green aspect so we know that we're safe to depart interlock we're away 25 miles an hour departing from baker street and i believe it goes up to 30 miles an hour very shortly so southbound remember the t that i was talking about the t board southbound of baker street station so between baker street and elephant and castle the t board represents 30 miles an hour However, northbound of Baker Street, the T-board represents 35 miles an hour. I know it makes no sense, but yeah. So now when we see a T-board, it means 30 miles an hour. Um, I don't think that's completely accurate. I feel like there, there are a couple of exceptions, but as a general rule, just remember that northbound of Baker Street, um, the T-board represents 35 miles an hour and southbound of Baker Street, south of Baker Street, T-board represents 30 miles an hour. And I think coming out of London Road Depot, <laughs> the T-board rep <laughs> that that section of track between London Road Depot and um, the junction just north of Lambeth North Station there's a T-board there that actually represents 10 miles an hour so yes the whole thing is just very confusing again it's, it's just more about knowing what speed limit applies to what section of track there's no point even thinking about looking at boards or anything you just need to know where to slow down and where to speed up because yeah this is very confusing the london underground is something else anyway that was regent's park station next station is oxford circus it's actually been pretty quick it's actually been a pretty decent run it's 11 42 at night oh, blimey 
speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Shortly reducing to 25, then instantly down to 20 after that. So this signal coming up in the distance, you want to be doing 25 by the time you reach that signal. So I'm going to use a short burst of brake step one as we get closer to that to bring us down to 25. Just doing that now. There we go. You can just about see the number 25 on that board that we just passed. When we reach the end of this left hand bend, I'm going to use another burst of brake step one to bring us down to 20. And you just, well, I know you definitely weren't able to see the number that was on that board, but it was number 20. <laughs> so speed limit is now 20 miles an hour. And this is a bit of a climb into Oxford Circus here. So you're going to need a bit of power just to maintain 20. And I'm only going to apply the brakes about a third of the way along the platform due to the fact that we're entering at a slower speed than normal. Oxford Circus, my people, Oxford Circus. Speed limit still 20 miles an hour. This is a very frustrating part of the route to drive on. Speed limit remains at 20 miles an hour for quite a while. And we're, we're on a significantly long downward gradient. So I'm going to have to constantly keep applying the brakes to prevent us from accidentally exceeding 20 miles an hour. So I'll shut off the power at 15 and I'm just letting gravity bring us up towards 20. Once we get to 20, I'm going to tap on brake step one. It's just doing that now to keep us below the speed limit. Bringing it down to 15 and releasing. Then I'm going to repeat that process until we are clear of the 20 mile an hour speed limit. Speed limit will be increasing to 30 miles an hour shortly. But then back down to 20 shortly after that. Another burst of brake step one. There's the 30 board, so giving it full power. As we enter this left hand bend, I'm immediately selecting brake step one again to bring us down to 20 miles an hour. 20 mile an hour speed limit commences at the end of this left hand bend here as we approach Piccadilly Circus station. Piccadilly Circus is very neat because it has that open section at the northbound end of the station. The northern end of the station I should say, not the northbound end of the station. <laughs> oh lord. But I technically believe this that would be the western end of the station. But obviously because the trains are going northbound, I'm sure everyone would think it's the northern end of the station. But technically Piccadilly Circus platforms are on a east to west axis. If we look at the map here, you can see, yeah. The, the network looks very weird, I can't lie. <laughs> this is when I first saw how the Bakerloo land looks on a map, I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, it, it's very choppy and sharp with cornery and stuff. I didn't, I wasn't expecting it to look like that, I'll be so honest. But it's, um, it's due to the fact that um, a lot of the track follows the alignments of streets above the streets above some of the streets of London so yeah 
something to do with the rights that they had when they were building the route because this is quite an old route as well it's from the early 1900s so they were only allowed to dig the tunnels in certain places for some reason speed limit is what was the speed limit i think the speed limit was 25 departing from piccadilly circus but it's now gone down to 20 again so um look out for the double signals after departing from piccadilly circus and that is where your 20 commences here we are entering charing cross station i do like the color scheme here at charing cross nice and brown color scheme as you know brown represents the bakerloo line each london underground line has its own assigned color and the bakerloo line's color is brown so you've got this nice and brown colored station here at charing cross Glancing at the signal quickly, green aspect. Interlock, and we're away. Speed limit is still 20 miles an hour between here and Embankment Station. Charing Cross and Embankment Station are the have the shortest distance between stations on the Bakerloo line. so close to the point that you can actually see um embankment station from charing cross from a train driver's perspective not from a pedestrian's perspective I believe the two stations are so close together that actually I'm not sure if it's these stations or two other stations but apparently it's quicker to just walk between the two stations at street level as opposed to going down to the platform waiting for a train getting on the train traveling to the next station getting off the train and going back up to street level I think it would generally be quicker to just walk between one station and the other Anyway, green signal, closing the doors. Next station is Waterloo. Speed limit is 20, shortly going up to 35. Then back down to 25. So we're going to see the 35 board just there. So I'm going to accelerate up towards that. And I believe it is, there's a left-hand bend coming up. At the end of that left-hand bend is where the speed limit reduces down to 25 miles an hour. So I'm just anticipating that now. There's the 25 pool just there on the right impossible to make out but i did see it just using power notch 2 to maintain 25 as we climb into waterloo station here into break step 4 momentarily there because we were coming up a bit too fast on the stopping position And we are four minutes late. I'm not sure why. I, I, I feel like I've been driving pretty fast. So I don't know how. <laughs> I, I was being a bit sluggish in the overground section. But once we entered the tunnels. I feel like I've been pretty on top of the speed limits. So four minutes late is baffling to me. Next station is Lambeth North. Which is the penultimate station. Before Elephant and Castle. Speed limit was 25 going up to 30 miles an hour and then back down to 25 
at the double no at the single signal so we got the double signal here and the sing, single signal following the double signal is where the 25 mile an hour speed limit commences you can see the boards there that was a 25 board with a 15 board above it the 15 board is associated with the crossover that we're now passing over so if you're being routed over to the right there you would have to do 15 miles an hour and that takes you up to London Road Depot here we are entering Lambeth North Station at this point I would be testing the um, Westinghouse brake which is a very complicated procedure I'm not going to bother going into it it is very difficult to pull off um, I'm not brave enough to attempt it in this recording but I'll maybe one day I'll get a recording of me doing it per perfectly I did record myself doing it perfectly once but I this was before I started the YouTube channel so I think I just ended up deleting the clip but I have pulled off a perfect Westinghouse stop before but it, it does take a lot of practice in fact I feel like there's in train sim world at least there's an element of luck involved in pulling off a perfect Westinghouse brake stop it's it is just it's it's an art it is an art Speed limit depart in Lambeth North is 25 miles an hour. Now this is just outright stupidity right here. Speed limit has just gone up to 30 miles an hour. And guess what? Uh, I'm shutting off the power now. Do you know why? Where is it? There it is. Speed limit goes right back down to 25. <laughs> you, you, I thought, who, who does this? Who, who, who actually does that? that is boredom right there the person making the speed limits for this route was like hmm what, what can I do to just be a, a nuisance I, I just I just feel like I just feel like being random I feel like doing something that makes no sense and they go just add that pointless 30 mile an hour speed limit there right at this signal here coming up so the signal after the right hand bend the speed limit goes down to 20 miles an hour as you can see, we had the signal without the route indication. If we had the route indication at that signal, we'd need to decelerate down to 10 miles an hour for the crossover into Elephant and Castle Platform 3. Because we didn't have the route indication, we know that we are being routed into Platform 4 at Elephant and Castle. So we can remain at 20 miles an hour. Although what I'm going to do is reduce my speed down to 10 miles an hour midway along the platform and I f that is because I believe in real life there are speed triggered train stops as you enter the platform here at Elephant and Castle so to avoid setting off the trip cock you yeah I, I believe you'd have to reduce your speed down to 10 miles an hour on entry into Elephant Castle, although I might be wrong, any real life Baker Luland drivers like hit me up, get in touch, whatever. Right now, going to commence with the shutdown procedure of the cab. So select the shutdown position on the power brake controller. Select to switch into off. Remove the key thingy that goes in there. Master switch into the off position as well. Headlight switch off tow light left and tow light right on um oof destination light no hold on gauge light my bad gauge light goes off um cab light sometimes the cab light gets left on in the rear cab but i'm gonna turn it off and that is it so exit in the cab and the turnaround times are ridiculously quick here at um, Elephant and Castle. In fact, so quick that it's impossible for one driver to... In fact, it's not impossible. It does happen sometimes. But a lot of the time, there'd have to be a driver posted at the other end of the platform ready to jump in the cab as soon as the train comes to a stand. Because the trains literally only hang about for about three minutes or so. Sometimes. But yeah. 
that concludes this commentated drive i hope you guys enjoyed the video constructive feedback and criticism is more than welcome in the comment section below if you'd like to further support the channel please consider liking and subscribing it is now 11 57 at night so i am off to bed i'll catch you guys in the next one love <laughs>